Thank you. It being 10.15, I am compelled to interrupt the proceedings and now begin member statements. I recognize the member for Niagara Centre. Thank you, Speaker. People in Niagara Centre need affordable places to live right now. I've been telling this government that repeatedly since 2018. The affordable housing crisis has been getting worse and worse over this government's term, and they've done nothing to address it. Wait lists in Niagara are out of control, and with rising costs, folks are becoming more and more desperate. The government has an obligation to all Ontarians, regardless of their background, to ensure they can keep a roof over their heads. Housing is a human right. Yesterday, 34-year-old Steve Sterling of Welland showed up at my office with his 83-year-old grandfather on his arm. He was trying to help his granddad resolve an outrageously high water bill. Steve has been living with his grandparents since his trade apprenticeship went off the rails last year, through no fault of his own, and he ended up back in a low-wage job. Steve's grandparents are moving into a supported living community next month. Steve has put out application after application for places that he can afford to live in. When he factors in car insurance, gas and groceries, basement apartments are the only thing in his price range. He has a small but steady income. He says landlords don't care and they are in the driver's seat. If Steve can't find a place by the end of next month, he'll be living in his car. Mr. Speaker, there is an affordable housing crisis in Niagara. The government has had four years to fix it and it has only gotten worse. When will we start treating housing affordability and homelessness like the crisis that it clearly is? Thank you, Speaker. Member statements. The member for Aurora, Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Well, thank you very much, Speaker, and good morning to all my colleagues. Speak for, speaker, for my last member statements here at Queen's Park and before the election, I'd like to dedicate a, my minute and a half to the members who are retiring as MPPs. Speaker, I'd like to start off by thanking the member from Windsor, Tecumseh, who sat in a chair for my very first inaugural speech here in the chamber, Mr. Speaker. As a new member in 2018, when I was delivering my first remarks, I was excited, I was happy, but also inc incredibly nervous. Speaker, when I paused for a brief moment and looked up at the member sitting in the chair, just like yours, Mr. Speaker, his calm, comforting, and supportive smile helped me get through the rest of my speech. Speaker, I'd also like to thank the member from Don Valley West for her remarkable 19 years of service and leadership to her community and the residents across Ontario. Speaker, for my colleagues on this side of the House, I'd like to thank and congratulate the member representing Burlington and the member from Hastings, Lennox and Addington for their many years of service and dedication to the people of this province. I'd also like to thank the member from Perry Sound, Muskoka, who served for a remarkable 23 years as MPP, Mr. Speaker. I'd also like to congratulate the Deputy Premier and the Minister of Health and the member representing constituency Newmarket Aurora. It was an honour and a privilege to serve alongside you, representing the great people of Aurora. Thank you for all you've done in the past four years, in particular the last two. I know it hasn't been easy. Speaker, I'd also like to thank the member from Perth, Wellington. He sets the bar extremely high for all of us members here, and I'm incredibly grateful to have served with him. And of course, the member from Stormouth, Dundas, South Glengarry, who has been a great friend these past four years. And Speaker, last but certainly not least, I'd like to extend my congratulations and sincere appreciation to the member representing Bruce Gray Owen Sound. Thank you for not only being a great colleague, but also a wonderful friend and a mentor to me and so many people here. I'd also like to thank the families of each and every member to allowing them to serve here. Fulfilling duties as an MPP is a great honour, so I hope that you get to spend some time with your families and loved ones. Speaker, they will all be missed here at Queen's Park, but their legacies will never be forgotten, and the good work they have done over the years, and for some of them from different parliaments, will continue to serve Ontarians long after retirement. Thank you for your service. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Speaker. I'd like to thank my community at Parkdale High Park for placing their trust and hope in me, for tasking me with the responsibility of representing us at Queen's Park. I'm proud to say that in the last four years, we have done some incredible work together. We protected local jobs by saving the Ontario Food Terminal and successfully pushed the government to designate it as a provincially significant employment zone. With the love and support of my community, I stood in this house with my newborn son in my arms and shone a bright light on the issue of maternal mental health, which 
which so many new mothers struggle with silently. We made history by passing my bill, becoming the first jurisdiction in the world to recognize July as Tibetan Heritage Month and worked across party lines to create the Ontario Parliamentary Friends of Tibet Summer Program, a paid opportunity for you to learn more about Ontario politics. The creativity and passion our community has to solve the biggest challenges, whether it's the housing crisis or the climate crisis, led to my tabling of over 20 bills and numerous motions during my first term. We fought back against illegal evictions and successfully kept some neighbors housed. Thanks to the perseverance of local small business owners, we were able to secure funding for many who were denied grants and helped them weather the lockdowns. We assisted local organizations to access millions in funding, from COVID-19 outbreak management funding for Copernicus Lodge to infrastructure funding for High Park Nature Center. The Stone Soup Network joined me to raise funds and distribute more than 15,000 free N95 masks to our neighbors who needed them most. Speaker, there simply isn't enough time to share all the amazing things we have accomplished together in Parkdale High Park. I am so proud and I know that we can and will do so much more. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, Member for Mississauga, Erin Mills. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last week, I had the pleasure to welcome Minister of Education to my riding of Mississauga, Erin Mills. I was honored to join him in announcing a new $249,000 in grants for Amba Abraham Charity and the Canadian Egyptian Heritage Association. These grants will go a long way towards helping our new immigrant students feel welcomed and adjust to their new home as well as combating racism and discrimination in Peel. Mr. Speaker, I'm thankful for Minister Lecce's strong support for Peel and the steps he took to clean many years of neglect from the previous government when actions were urgently needed to stop anti-black racism and discrimination in our Peel schools. Mississauga is a fantastic representation of the rich cultural mosaic we have in Ontario and across Canada. And I am honored I had the chance to reach out and serve each of and every community in Erin Mills. I would like to take a moment to celebrate our rich diversity and the many celebrations of these coming weeks. Mr. Speaker, as we are approaching the weekend, I would like to wish our Christians and Roman Catholics a very blessed Good Friday and a Happy Easter. Our Ontario Jewish community, a blessed Passover. Our Sikh community, I wish you a wonderful Vesaki. Also, I extend my wishes to Eastern Orthodox Coptic Armenians and Antukian Christians for a happy Easter next week. For all Muslim Ontarians observing the holy month of Ramadan, Eid Fitr Mubarak. Mr. Speaker, Ontario rich and diverse community are our strengths. And as we approach the end of 42nd session of Parliament, I wish Ontario, Ontarians a wonderful summer and a time of peace and celebration with their loved families. Thank you. Thank you. Member for Algoma Manakila. Thank you, Speaker. Well, since there is a theme of stretching this morning, I'll see how I, that I can stay within my timelines. I want to take this time to thank the good people of Algoma Manitoulin for having provided me with the honour and privilege of representing them for the last 11 years. I don't know if this is going to be my last opportunity to speak to them before going on the uh, doorsteps. I look across the way, and I look across my, uh, uh, the way on this side as well and over my shoulders. We've established some really good friendships here, and there's a lot that we have to be proud of. Um, I look at my friends across the way, the many discussions that we've had from the class of 2011, new friends that I've made just this term, uh, and, and I look forward to working with many of you going forward. I really want to put a big thank you to our team, uh, our house team here, the member from Hamilton Mountain, London West, and to Miss Ming Cochran. Um, You've made me a better person uh, because of, uh, and a little bit of thanks to the uh, government house leader as well, because <laughs> when you don't know what's coming at you, you have to react pretty quickly, and we've been punching pretty friggin' good. And um, it's, uh, it, it's funny, I, I've always used this expression, is I uh, pride myself on the relationship that I've built, and I'm not one to throw stones across the way. What I will do is grab that stone, I will walk over, I will put it in your pocket so that when you leave from here, you will remember that I asked a question and then I need your help. And that's how I choose to look at things and those are the choices that I make. So as you all go home this weekend, celebrate it the way you see fit, 
Make sure you spend time with your family. Rock, Mathieu, Dad's going to get you on the alley playing bowling. <laughs> member statements. The member for York Centre. Speaker, the right to liberty is enshrined by Section 7 of Canada's Charter, but radical left-wing ideology undermines 21st century liberty. It mocks and demonizes everyone who even uses the phrase liberty and bullies governments into undermining it. Basic, well-agreed-upon principles arising out of the right to liberty, most notably the presumption of innocence, are being eroded. The presumption of innocence imports the right to due process. Governments can simply convict a person of an offense and impose a penalty without a hearing. Speaker, Bill 100 does exactly that. It prescribes a conviction of a person and imposition of penalty without a trial. I quote from the explanatory note of the bill as drafted by Legislative Council. Section 9 empowers the Register of Motor Vehicles to make orders without a hearing, suspending or cancelling the plate portion of a permit for a commercial motor vehicle, a trailer, or a CVR certificate. Speaker, Bill 100 expressly denies due process. It allows government to convict and punish Ontarians without a trial. Our rights should not be determined by political persuasion or ideology. There is no harm resulting to government or people from a fair hearing, which takes away someone's ability to make a living. Every Ontarian, regardless of their views on any political issue, every lawyer, every legislator must oppose this erosion of liberty. I ask the government to respect the rule of law, respect Canada's democracy. Do not submit Bill 100 for royal assent. Member statements. Order. 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 I think we're ready to resume. Member for order. Order. The member for Bruce Gray Owen Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I want to start just by saying thank you very much to the uh, member from Aurora Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill, for his kind words, his friendship, and it makes it a little easier to leave this place knowing that our house is in good shape with GQ and the leadership of our young people that are coming in behind us. I also want to say thank you to uh, MPP Mantha from Algoma Management for his kind words. Speaker, I rise today to recognize a milestone achieved by one of my constituents in the great riding of Bruce Gray Owen Sound. Mr. Brian Rankin of Meaford recently celebrated his 25th year as the race director of the very successful and popular Meaford, Meaford Harbour Run Walk, which I participate in. Speaker. For the past 25 years, Mr. Rankin has served as one of the leaders of this very important event. The Meaford Harbour Run Walk is a fundraising event for the Meaford Hospital Foundation and in its 25-year history has raised more than $750,000 for the local hospital. This is an incredible achievement and a true reminder of the amazing things all of us can accomplish when we work together, volunteer time and strive towards improving our communities. Mr. Speaker, the 2021 Run Walk was Mr. Rankin's last as race director. I want to offer him my sincere congratulations for his efforts and volunteerism to make this event such a massive success. The great thing about the Run Walk event is that it is open to everybody. Whether you're a competitive runner testing your skills against other top local runners or out for a leisurely stroll around the course from beautiful Meaford, everybody is welcome. Mr. Speaker, as I said, I myself have competed as a runner, although it probably looks more like a walker, event and have always had a lot of fun. Although I must admit, I have not yet emerged as the race winner. I have no doubt the Meaford Harbour Run Walk will continue to be an outstanding event and fundraiser under its new leadership. Mr. Rankin's legacy of selfless dedication to this terrific cause will continue to live on into the future as the event continues to run and raise money for the Meaford Hospital. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of all the residents of Bruce Gray Owen Sound, thank you to Mr. Rankin, his team, and everyone who volunteers in any capacity. Thank you, Speaker. Thanks. Member for Sudbury. Thank you, Speaker. <clears throat> Speaker, yesterday I filed a motion for the Legislative Assembly of Ontario to provide an official statement of apology to Ontario's McIntyre Powder Project miners, and today I'd like to explain why the apology is warranted. Between 1943 and 1979, more than 25,000 Ontario mine workers were forced to breathe a finely ground aluminum dust known as McIntyre Powder. So before the start of each and every shift, the doors of the dry, that's the mining change room, those were sealed shut, Speaker, the ventilation would be turned off, and a fine mist of aluminum dust was pumped inside. It made the air turn black. The miners sealed inside were told to breathe deeply so the dust could coat their lungs and protect them. If they refused, they were fired. Unfortunately, McIntyre aluminum powder didn't protect these miners, and instead, Speaker, they experienced immediate and long-term health effects. Fortunately, we've come a long way since this began. Decades ago, despite expert evidence that recommended against the use of McIntyre powder, this practice was supported. It was sanctioned by the Ontario government. But this year, the Ministry of Labour announced that the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease 
linked to McIntyre powder aluminum dust will be formally recognized as an occupational disease under the Workplace Safety and Insurance Act. Good news indeed. This apology is important to more than 25,000 miners and their families from all across Ontario. These are valued community members, loving husbands and wives, supportive mothers and fathers. These are people who dedicate their lives and work to the betterment of our province. With the McIntyre Powder Project, I'm asking the Legislative Assembly of Ontario to provide an official statement of apology to these McIntyre Powder Project miners. What happened wasn't fair, and they deserve to hear this apology as soon as possible. They know the apology is symbolic, but many of these minors are elderly. Most are health compromised, Speaker. It remains incredibly urgent and important to them, and as well, they're now possible to hear it in person. I look forward to working with all members of this legislature, including Janice Hobbs Martel from the McIntyre Powder Project, to schedule a time for these minors and their families to hear this very important apology. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. <laughs> Member for Member for Barry Innisfil. Thank you. Today, I rise to bring awareness to all members of this legislature and all Ontarians about Parkinson's. April is Parkinson's Awareness Month, month across Canada. Parkinson's is chronic, progressive, and results in increasing disability and dramatic impacts on individuals, families, communities, everywhere in Ontario and everywhere in Canada. Over 100,000 Canadians are living with Parkinson's, and that number is expected to rise, with 30 Canadians being diagnosed every day. They include constituents like mine, Greg Griggs, who's watching today, and this statement is dedicated to you, Greg. Greg lives in Barrie, and he's become a Parkinson's ambassador. He wants all Ontarians to know that Parkinson's does not discriminate based on age, and that you can be diagnosed at any age and very young. Greg was 39 when he was first diagnosed, and at the time of diagnosis, he was informed that he had been living with Parkinson's for 10 years. He just didn't know it. But Greg has not let that get him down. He has not let it stop him from advocating for fellow Canadians with Parkinson's. He has held events and fundraisers like Show Me Your Shake and has been a tireless advocate with his son, Tyler. I encourage every member of this legislature to think about their constituents living with Parkinson's and to take the time to learn more by visiting the Parkinson's Canada website and talking with your constituents with Parkinson's. Thank you, Greg, for all your efforts, and thank you to your son, Tyler, and I look forward to all your advocacy in our community and across Canada. Thank you very much. That concludes our member's statements for this morning. I beg to inform the House that, pursuant to Standing Order 9H, the clerk has received written notice from the government house leader indicating that a temporary change in the weekly meeting schedule of the house is required and therefore orders of the day on monday april 25th 2022 shall commence at 9 a.m number of members want to raise points of order um, we'll start with the member for niagara center I seek unanimous consent to move a motion regarding the immediate passage of Bill 81, the Protecting Vulnerable Persons in Support of Living Accommodation Act 2021, to better ensure the health and safety of vulnerable residents in need of special care, and that the question on the motion be put without debate or amendment. Mr. Birch is seeking the unanimous consent of the House to move a motion regarding the immediate passage of Bill 81, the Protecting Vulnerable Persons in Support of Living, Support of Living Accommodation Act 2021. Agreed? Agreed. Heard a no. The member for Scarborough Guildwood has a point of order. Order, Speaker. I'd like to correct my record uh, from this morning's debate. Um, I was referring to uh, the victim as Safi. I'd like to to put into the record his correct name. Uh, it's Safiula Kosra Ri, and he's a 15-year-old young man that was killed on January 20th, 2020 at Mark Manel's mayor in Scarborough. Thank you very much. Another point of order? Member for Scarborough Guild. Speaker, I am asking for unanimous consent to move a motion without notice to passing Bill 60, addressing gun violence, the Safe and Healthy Communities Act, and that we bring forward this legislation to pass second and third reading without notice. Member for Scarborough, Scarborough Guildwood is seeking the unanimous consent of the House to move a motion with respect to the immediate passage of Bill 60. Agreed? No. Heard a no. 